Welcome to Market Buzz. I'm Greg Schnell, the Canadian technician and host of the Market Buzz. And each show, we do a deep dive into different industries using weekly charts to see what is happening on a long timeline. Please follow me on Twitter at Schnell Investor, and you can also find my blogs on gregschnell.com as well as stockcharts.com. So I want to talk about what looks to me like another round trip, and uh, we're going to jump into the charts here right away. So one of the things I'm noticing is that the metal markets are rolling down hard this week. Um, steel stocks surged roughly a week ago, and now they look like they just basically ran up and, and are doing a lumber kind of move where they ran up and then just fell over. Um, so we're going to dive into those details and you can check that out. Um, I do have a membership sale uh, starting right now, going to the end of uh, the month. Mining the metals, it's called, and it uh, saves $363 off an annual membership at gregschnell.com slash explore. And uh, that'll get you a membership at $497. All of the memberships have a free two-week trial. Um, so go in and try it. And if you don't like it, you can always opt out. Um, it doesn't take your credit card, or it doesn't charge your credit card until after the... Um, the two week free trial. So um, try that out, see if there's anything there for you if you're interested. Okay, uh, what I want to cover off is I've got a, a chart list called Steel and Material, and it's also oil patch suppliers because um, the oil industry orders a lot of steel. Uh, but what I wanted to cover off was just some different ways to look at the charts and then. Um, and, and just show you how I might approach this, and then we'll get into a few of the charts specifically. But one of my favorite ways to look at charts are the candle glance version, and this is all the daily charts, and you can always zoom in on your screen and just make them a lot bigger, um, which which I think works pretty good. Um, but the one thing that um, you might want to change is the size of your chart. Um, so in this case, it's set up as a daily chart with... Uh, a zoom panel beside it and it's got about five months of data six months of data um, but let's say you wanted to look at that on a weekly chart basis how would you do that so let's go um, over and take a quick look uh, so so what would happen normally is you go into a specific chart and I'm just going to zoom back out here a little and then on a specific chart what happens is in order to get my candle glance view that's what I've called the chart so, so this is that same chart that we saw on the other page. And then the idea being um, that, let's say you wanted to see that candle glance in weekly. Well, the way I've set this up, I don't want to say it's hidden, but it's just a little bit different. But I have different candle glance charts already sitting here. And one's called uh, candle glance daily. One's called candle glance weekly, candle glance weekly two. And then when I want to use a candle glance, I don't have to worry about getting about this chart going because if I click on candle glance daily, it's this, it's the same thing. Um, or I could add the zoom box, whatever. It's no big deal. Um, but what I want to do in this case is let's say I want to go to candle glance weekly and put that on here. Well, now I'm going to go for two years of data and you could just see a um, pretty basic chart and maybe it's not full stochastics you wanted. Maybe it's something different. Um, let's just see actually what candle glance weekly two has. It might have what I'm looking for here. No, it's missing the SCTR ranking. So let's just add that. And put the SCTR on there, and I want to put it on the top of the chart, so I'm going to say above. And now what we've got is the PPO indicator, a couple of moving averages, and this, the uh, scooter ranking. I like to have a line at 75 on my scooter ranking, so then I'll go in here, and I'll put in overview, horizontal line. We're going to say 75. We're going to make that line blue, and then put an update, and that should give us a line across here. So when stocks are strong they'll have this um, line across them. And I usually like to use a charcoal background with my, um, or a graphite background with my weekly charts. So uh, we'll do that. And then the other thing we might want to do is just put the volume as separate, and that's going to put it below. So that's our new candle glance. Now we could zoom in if we want using the zoom thumbnail. And in order to do that, we just put that box in there. So now let's say that we're happy with that as my candle glance. We can save this um, as a chart style. And we're going to replace candle glance 2 
with the scooter ranking and the zoom panel on here. Now, um, again, when I was originally in my candle glance view here, it was showing daily like this. So what I can do is I can go here and now what I want to look at is I want to go pick up this candle glance to pattern, but I want to save it or replace my candle glance. And by doing that, I can just have these other three options all preset. And then I can um, save this as my candle glance. So now when I hit update to this chart here, um, what should happen is I should pop up with my new candle glance view. And again, if I wanted to quickly switch back, then I would just literally go in here and pick candle glance daily. And then I would replace candle glance with... Um, with the candle glance daily version. So whenever you want to see candle glance in your size, you can just flip back and forth by having these other ones already saved. I hope, I hope I've cleared that up to make sense. Um, but the idea being, if I want to look at these on a weekly chart, I want the ability to, to just kind of check them out. Now, one thing's particularly important on this particular chart list, I could have done just steel, but I've got all kinds of materials and what I called oil patch suppliers. So it might be air products, which is for welding um, equipment and oxygen and CO2 and all the other um, different types of uh, compressed um, elements. So, as I look through this chart, a couple of things come to mind, right? So I've got a two week view here and I've got about a six month view in the zoom panel. But what you're starting to see is um, falling below these longer term moving averages. And again, uh, one, one thing I should have done there, sorry about that. Let me just go back and get this. I'm gonna go back and get my candle glance weekly too. And then I wanna put on my um, legends as default. And that's going to show you what the moving averages are. So I've got a 20 period and a 50 period moving average. If I replace, um, so let's uh, save this. Actually, just go like this, replace. And I'm going to replace the candle glance weekly too with this. And now it'll have the legends on there so you can see what those are. Hopefully that helps. Um, one of the reasons to use a 20 week moving average is because that's also the center of the Bollinger Bands. And typically what you find is when you're on a chart, Bollinger Bands can be uh, a, a good clue as to what's going on. So when you're above the 20 week moving average, typically that's a pretty good place to look. And when you start to get below, that's a bit of a problem. So um, we can also see that the Bollinger Bands are pinching down and, and after going sideways for a long period of time, they were pinched down here. And then literally in November, they shot up. Now, they, on this particular chart, they haven't done anything for four months or whatever. Um, but the Bollinger Bands, just the 20-week moving average, can give you a clue. Are we in a bull market or a bear market? And if I just um, opened up this chart to five years and maybe widen it out a little bit, um, what you'd see here is that when you're above the 20 week moving average, it's pretty good. When you're below, it's not so good. Above is so that's just a real simple guide, right? We're just picking the 20 week and no real magic with that. Okay, so we can go here and we can click update on this chart now. And now we're going to also have the oh, uh, maybe I didn't do that right. Sorry, um, I thought I had saved that so we could see what the moving averages were, but anyway, um, I'll leave it uh, just to get on with the story. So the big issue here on um, these moving averages is you want to be above the 20 week. And if you're starting to go below the 50 week moving average or the long term moving average, that's pretty important data. So what we see on air products here is it's it's testing this long week moving average and typically it doesn't get below that. So we want to see that hold. If it's starting to fail, that becomes a problem. So Last week, we started to see some of the tech or some of the metal stocks uh, perform pretty well. And Arcelor and Mattel was one of them. And so here we can just click on this chart. So there's the five year. We're trying to break through prior highs here. 36.58 was our high, 36.63. Can't make that stuff up. You're up here testing the highs and now we're rolling over. We also have lower momentum showing up here on this chart. So what, what I want to worry about is if this is going to start breaking lower, that's a pretty good clue to me. So let's go back to that candle glance view. 
Okay, so here's ArcelorMittal. So you can see this momentum is declining here. That five-year picture I showed kind of tells us where we are relative to history. But more importantly here, we're starting to make a second lower high in momentum, and this is quite critical. So we also see the same thing going on um, as we have in the indexes right now, like the NASDAQ index is making higher highs but lower lows in momentum. So that's typically not a good setup. Um, you'd like to see it stay above 2% on the uh, PPO momentum indicator, but if all of a sudden this starts to break down, you'd notice. One of the things we, when we just quickly kind of look here, we've already got Allegheny Technologies below its 20-week moving average and testing the 50-week. We can go down here and uh, look and see that Arcelor Mattel is holding up nicely still so far, but again, declining momentum. Here's BASF. This chart has gone sideways since the beginning of the year, hasn't done anything. It's on lower momentum and it looks like it wants to try and turn up here, but it's pretty important it does because we're starting to fall below the 20 week moving average. That's not a great look for us. So as we go through these charts, again, you could flip back and forth to, to daily or weekly. And I, Right now they're sorted alphabetically. So one of the other choices we could do is we could put the strongest charts first. How would we do that? We would use the scooter ranking and that's up here in the top. So we could sort by scooter ranking, save that sort order, and then look at the best charts first or conversely look at the worst charts first, whatever you prefer. If you're a value buyer, you're trying to find them after they've been beaten up. If you're a, um, a buyer of all time highs, then you're gonna look at something like an ArcelorMittal Okay, so if you're a, a buyer at all-time highs, you want to look at ArcelorMittal. And um, then if you're a value buyer, you're looking for something that's already pulled back a bit. And maybe it's just to the 20-week moving average. Or maybe it's, um, you know, you want to see a big base or a long trend line that you're starting to bounce off of. Whatever your trading style is, again, there's... Um, there's multiple trading styles out there. So one of them is to buy the breakouts to new high. That was ArcelorMittal. And then we have these other names starting to come in here where they're making a lower high. And you can also see the scooter ranking is starting to, to underperform here. So these are making lower highs and lower lows on momentum. Uh, that's cautionary. And again, we're starting to fall back below the 20-week moving average. It hasn't been bad, but it hasn't been... Yep, yeah, made a lot of money here waiting around with all this volatility. So different ways to approach the market. And again, when you're getting into this candle glance view, you might want to zoom in and see these. Um, I have a Mac, so I just go Command Plus to see zoomed in and Command Minus. And I think on a, a PC, it's Control Plus and Control Minus. But as you zoom in, it gives you a quick idea of what's going on on all the charts. So we can see that this Sidergica, which is a metal company, scooter ranking is just starting to fall below 75. Now, does that matter? Well, to me it does, because one of the things you'll find, um, <clears throat> sorry, one of the things you'll find on these charts is when the scooter ranking starts to fail, it's not a bad place to at least be aware of the change in momentum. And what the scooter ranking does, it, it compares the stock to its peers. So in this case, it's compared to its large cap peers, and it's only better than 48% of them. That's not very good. So what we see is the scooter ranking was one of the top stocks all the way up here, started to wobble and is now telling us to be careful here as it drops, and it's falling below 50%. Well, it could stay down here for a year. So do you really want to keep holding this stock because you've been on a nice run? Do you want to assume that it's ready to hold up there, or do you want to start looking for other names that are moving into uh, strength. So as, as other stocks like this steel stock fall away, um, even if the whole stock market was falling, some of them would rise to the top and that is because they're falling less than, uh, than other stocks. So what you end up with, I wanna, I'll, I'll use the example Walmart. In the 2007 financial crisis, Walmart, even though lots of volatility, if you took the October 9th high to the March 6th low in 2009, Walmart was up 15% in that period and the S&P 500 was down like 55%. So, um, so Walmart over time actually 
held up better than a lot of those stocks. And then the problem was at the end of that, then Walmart was out of favor for almost like two years while everybody was invested in growth stocks and all these um, large value companies had returned to to improving financials. And then uh, throughout that period, is a good time to avoid Walmart. So what we see here is the full stochastic already down at 20 and perhaps that's a good buy signal. You just want to buy on the dip. Or in this case, the scooter ranking starting to bail and you probably want to be more careful. So for me, um, I, I try to keep track of what the whole group is doing. So um, I'm zoomed in quite, I was zoomed in quite close here, but if we can do these chart um, candle glance views, what you're basically looking for um, when you look through the whole group is what is trending up and what is trending down. And so we've got two pages of them here real quick, sideways, sideways, down, down, up, sideways, rolling over, um, down, down, sideways, sideways, up. So you have a few stocks still going higher, but two-thirds of them are either going sideways or down. Um, <clears throat> that's a real quick synopsis of what we see, but as we look through the charts and just continue this, we can see the same sort of condition showing up time after time. And what we don't want to get trapped in is a bunch of stocks that we thought were going to be great and are starting to roll down. So how do we avoid that? <clears throat> One of the best ways to do that is keep track of the overall scooter ranking within the group, um, so SCTR ranking. And uh, when that starts to break down, what we want to be aware of on that breakdown is that as the, the stocks are moving lower as a group, they start to, to lose strength. We particularly just want to bail and then look for other groups that are starting to turn up. So in, in this particular case, um, you know, we've still got some stocks like this Lindy PLC hitting new highs. Now it had a couple of things going for it. It sells oxygen. That was a big one for COVID-19 cases. But look what's going on with the scooter ranking. It's actually becoming one of the better stocks out there. And on this five-year history, we can see typically it's above 50%, but majority of the time it it's not a real top performer so unlike that other stock that went up ran up and held at a very high level and then pulled back this one actually um, trades pretty well it's gently been on an uptrend for five years had your covid dip in here but for the most part it's held above the 40 week moving average so it's a pretty i'll call it uh, simple stock to own if you're not interested in trading it doesn't have a lot of volatility, um, but it, at least it's more stable if that's what you're looking for. Sorry, we have a lot of smoke in the air um, where I'm at, and so I'm uh, my throat's been raspy over the last few days. Uh, we just had a fire within 100 miles of us here, so sorry about that. Um, okay, so what we see on this, again, a couple of these are heading higher, but a lot of them are starting to go sideways to down. And so we, we need to be aware of the change in the trend. So quickly, one way to do that is to just go up to the top and we're going to change it to a summary. And on the summary view, we want to add the column scooter ranking. And here we can search by scooter ranking. And again, what I'm looking for is how many stocks are above 75. And in this case, we've got lots on, I'm recording this on Tuesday, and we've got lots that are down quite hard um, out of this group. And then what we want to also see is how many are below 75. So we've still got a full page here and then another few. So I would say at least half are below 75. So we're starting to lose kind of that upside momentum that we had, that big sharp uptrend. And then uh, for me, one of the other things to look at is when stocks are down here around um, 25%, are they starting to turn back up or what's going on with them? So we could just click on one of these. What you see here is this stock doesn't look like it's ready to turn up anytime soon. Um, it could start tomorrow, but it hasn't started yet. And I think one of the, the clues that we're starting to see in this uh, bigger picture, so if we just go to view all, 
and look at all of these stocks. Um, you know, here's, uh, we haven't saved the sort order of the strength index, but if we were to just scan through, here's your scooter ranking at 50, the stock hasn't done anything for a year. Here's uh, regional holdings, ALJ, it hasn't done anything for a year. Allegheny Technology clearly rolling down for the last three or four months. Amco Pittsburgh. So this gives us a way to just kind of quickly scan through the charts using the 10 per page. The other thing that we can do, so I'm just going to scroll up to the top here. I'm going to edit this list. And, and what do I need to do here? When you have your stock ticker symbol, what if you wanted to sort them, you have to put a number in front of this column. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to the summary page and I have to decide what I want to sort on. Do I, if I was to just sort the highest price of the stocks first, I would use the close. If I wanted to sort by whatever, the one month rate of change, um, just click on that and say which stocks have been outperforming lately. We could do that or we could see which ones are worst first, um, any of that. One of the ones I like to use, obviously, is the scooter ranking. And when we do that, what, what's going to happen? So on this page, we have roughly 20. And so um, here's our, let's say our top 10. That's going to be on the first page of the 10 for page, um, top 20 or around here. And then what happens around 72? So we're going to be around the second or the third page um, getting into those uh, stocks that are under 75. And then we can quickly go take a, a look and see if they're actually breaking down or breaking up or or what's kind of the big trend. So what we want to know is are stocks in this group getting stronger or weaker? And last week, again, we had some big movers. We had Steel Dynamics that was up 13%. Ryerson took off, was up 58 LSB Industries. Um, so we had some big movers, but for the most part, a lot of them were up 10% over the last month. That's pretty good. Um, can get by on those kind of returns. But I think the bigger picture is what we want to know is what's happening as a group. So now... Um, at the bottom of this page, we're going to go down and we're going to hit number in sorted order. And when we do that, that's going to add numbers in front of these. Okay. Um, so when I, and how do I get rid of those numbers? I go to the edit list again, where I was before, and I would scroll down and I would just highlight all of the stocks, select them all. And then I would remove the numbers from, but we still want the numbers. So we're not going to remove them, but that's how you'd take them off and then find your sort order and then put them back on again. So if we wanted to remove them, we would hit remove, remove all numbers. And now I'm just going to go back to the summary list. I'm going to click on scooter ranking and now I'm going to scroll to the bottom of the page and number in sorted order. So it's that easy to kind of switch back and forth. Okay. Um, so we've, we've got the the strongest stocks first, and now we can go click on our 10 per page, or we could go to gallery view or um, candle glance. And on candle glance, again, we're going to have the strongest stocks first. There's only two pages on here because it puts about 50 in each one. Um, but you can see that very the strong stocks all are up in the top right-hand corner. And as we scroll down the page, we're starting to get flatter and flatter. And then as we go to page two, um, we see that they're actually starting to roll over and roll down. Um, again, this is looking at a weekly chart, and so we're starting to see weekly trends. So here's uh, Carpenter, and what we see on this particular chart is it's really breaking down hard. And just by looking at the larger technical picture, we can see all of these stocks are starting to fail and bail. Um, so as we start to see that um, trend change, what we want to watch for is that we're not staying in this, I'll call it steel trade, if it's starting to break down. And we're not just trying to use the steel trade, we're trying to find um, any industries that are breaking down. And we want to try and stay in industries that are trending higher. So semiconductors have recently rolled down. Um, we're starting to find the the steel and the copper names rolling down. We've seen oil roll down. So in general, we're starting to see some changes in groups. Now, if we go look at the software industry, um, that group has been particularly strong and still has been. Um, this week, we're starting to see the, the market wobble a bit as we head towards options expiration on Friday. But what I want to know um, or be aware of is the trend in general stocks. And 
As soon as we get down into the scooter ranking of 75, so we just want to find um, blue lines down around 75. So I'm just looking up in the top corner here. So here's stocks that are starting to have their scooter rankings below 75 and what's happening on those stocks. And we can just see that they're actually starting to make topping structures. And if they don't stay turned up here, they're going to fall in this case below the 10 week moving average and move back down below the 50 uh, or the 40 week moving average. You can see here it was below the 40 week moving average for most of the time for two and a half years. Then it rallied above and now it's threatening to go below. Do you really want to hang around in some steel stocks if that's going to start to happen? So hopefully that gives you an idea of how you can kind of change your candle glance view relatively quickly, how you can go through the sort order of these stocks um, and just get a feel for what's going on. When you put the strongest names first, at least you'll focus your investing on the strongest stocks. But the bigger problem um, we need to be aware of is what's the trend in the broader group. The strongest names will obviously hold up longer than the rest of the names. But what we don't want to do is overstay our welcome and all of a sudden find, let's say, the steel stocks gapping lower. And we're still trying to hold them, take out profits from you know, the gain over the last two or three weeks. So here's Ryerson. That was a stock that went 44 or 14 to 24. Uh, pretty nice return. And now this week is putting in an um, inverted candle where we're starting to test the lows, not the highs anymore. And it's been a big move, right? So all of a sudden you've all, not quite a double, but pretty close. I guess 13 to 26 is a double um, if you were smart enough to buy it on the low of the day uh, back here. But the, or low of the week, but the big bigger picture is if these are all going to start to roll over right away then we probably want um, to try and figure out how to take profits rather than how to stay in this new uptrend and again a vicious up move like that is really nice as long as you take profits if you give it all back that's not quite as comfortable so here's a daily chart you can see it was pretty strong and now all of a sudden we're getting one just one um, big down day so the question is is there higher highs to be made in this or are we pushing our luck a little bit by hanging around too long? I think the bigger um, trend that I'm starting to see um, in industrial metals in general, so if I just went to the dollar GYX, um, this is a in Goldman Sachs industrial metals index, we haven't gone very far for four months and even with steel starting to push up, we haven't been able to do it. If I go look at the um, copper chart, it's starting to have some uh, similar issues, basically making lower highs and lower lows on a big picture. All of these things um, can help you fine tune your investing process. But the one, the one thing that I think is important is being able to flip your candle glance view around from daily to weekly. So hopefully I've shown you how to do that, how to recognize changes in, in, um, the industry groups by watching the scooter rankings either of the individual stocks or of the group themselves um, through a ETF or just using the industry data. So all of these components um, can help make you a better investor and hopefully some of these tools I've shown you today without getting specifically into which stocks to buy and sell. Um, have a chart list set up with the particular industry you want to look at go in there, sort it into the way you want to look at them and find if there's stuff working. Also, it can help you if stuff stops working. So I think that's probably a bigger picture and something more important. So thanks for taking the time to join me on Market Buzz. Market Buzz airs Wednesdays at 10.30 a.m. Eastern. You can also see the recording on Stock Charts TV, YouTube page or Stock Charts On Demand. Thanks for taking the time again. Have a good week and good trading. Bye-bye. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.